Hey, what is up guys? I am Kohawk here coming at you again with another uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 related video. And uh, this time I'm going to teach you how to use two monitors to play Microsoft Flight Simulator and have more visual space because we all know Flight Simulator, we need a lot of uh, horizontal space. And if you watch my previous video, I showed you my setup of having two monitors act as one monitor so I can see more to the side of my cockpit. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple effect or a pretty simple feature, but as I uh, mentioned, uh, as, as the other features are, they're not commonly used because a lot of people just use one monitor, a lot of games just use one monitor, uh, but Flight Simulator, of course, is very special that we need more peripheral vision. Uh, so I'm going to teach you how to use NVIDIA Surround. Uh, if you're an AMD user, you'll be using a, a feature called AMD Ifinity. Now I have a monitor right here. You're seeing the desktop of that monitor right now. And I do also have another monitor connected to the right, um, but it's not active yet. So I will turn it on first. Well, I don't have to do that yet. I don't necessarily have to do that, but, you know, why not? So I'm going to click Extend Desktop. And that'll refresh the uh, the thingy. I'm gonna say keep changes, but now it's turned my main monitor into a 4K one because it is a 4K one. I'm gonna I'm gonna downgrade that to a 1080p 60 hertz monitor. Where is it? There it is. Because I want the monitors to have matching resolutions to just it's gonna make it simpler. So now I have two monitors, two 1080p monitors now uh, what i want to do is right click the desktop or you know you run it a different way but it doesn't matter you want to go to nvidia control panel or amd's control panel equivalent i'm not an amd kind of guy i have one amd card i don't remember the name of the software but you want to go to the control panel and you want to click on span displays with sound so over here on the 3d settings Oh, you're not seeing it on the capture because my camera is covering it. So on the NVIDIA control panel, you'll see on the left side, there is configure surround, comma, physics. So click on that and you'll see here surround configuration. Uh, but first check out your uh, monitor configuration right here. You can see uh, there's a representation on the back of my graphics card here, the GTX 1080 Ti, and one monitor is connected to the HDMI, one monitor is connected to the DisplayPort. Perfect, uh, perfect configuration for two monitors. And then what you want to do is click Span Displays with Sound. Now, um, the problem here is I have to cut my recording and then start again after I click Configure because it's going to want to uh, close the apps that are running. So if I click this, you see that it says I should, it's, it wants to close all the apps. So I will stop recording and then apply changes here with configure and I'll show you uh, the result of after, uh, of after clicking configure. Okay. Okay, we're back and I just clicked configure and it all happened uh, perfectly. So as you can see, we are here on the surround setup, NVIDIA surround setup here. And it shows a bunch of things here. You can see that there's a topology selector here. Uh, the topology only means if it's going to be side, uh, side to side monitors or vertical monitors. So one by two means one deep monitor, uh, one and two, I, I, X and Y, I think. I don't, wow, I, I'm dumb. Anyway, you can see that there are the list of displays on the left side. You click on each display, it'll show up on this little graphic on here. And you can see that there's a combined resolution in the middle portion here. That's correct because I have, let's, let's, we're considering two 1080p monitors here. Combined together, they make 3840 by 1080. Now, what is going to happen here? Also, there's going to be a refresh rate selector. Uh, it's going to be the lowest common denominator between the two. So it's going to be 60 for both of these. Um, and what's this effectively going to do is just combine these monitors together into one 3840 by 1080. So for all intents and purposes, all programs is going to recognize your monitor as a super ultra wide 3840 by 1080 P display. And you're going to be like the baller based on the, the windows saying that you have a super ultra wide. So if you click enable surround, it's going to change something on my recording because it's going to make a super ultra wide monitor uh, out of two monitors and you'll see it in just a bit because uh, it's still 
kind of blinking in and out for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait and I'll see where CL, CL results results in a couple seconds. Every all of my screens are still blank right now. Um, and I gotta move this back. Oh no, I lost my other my one monitor, uh, my third monitor. I have a third monitor where this recording. Um, window is my OBS window so as you can see right here my single monitor has turned into a big long monitor that spans really really far um, and I'll move it like this because it's gonna be like a super like it is a super ultra wide right now um, and then as you can see uh, it's combined two monitors together and uh, you can see that monitor, there's monitor one number right there, and then monitor two over there. Those are both of your monitors, and if you're seeing this like I am, you'll see one monitor has number one, the other monitor is number two. And then you'll just, you know, you close NVIDIA, because that's done. Yeah, save changes. And now you have a really, really, really big monitor now. And as you can see, if I maximize this, well, that's not going to do. Um, a, a few apps will recognize this as just one single monitor, including, as you can see, my wallpaper just went to the center of my screen. And it, it's recognizing, Windows is recognizing this as a really wide monitor, and it's centering my, my wallpaper. Um, and that means I can run uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. The one monitor here, the second monitor here, and up, up here is the full 3840 by 1080 captured into, you know, this, this recording. Uh, so you can see it is spanning. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's there and I can, you know, just scroll, scroll to the left and to the right. Um, and, uh, if you, if this is the first time you're booting Microsoft flight simulator in this configuration, you, it'll be kind of like super stretched left and right because it's still going to run at 1080 P 1920 by 1080. So what you want to do is go to options general after you boot up and then pick your right it's gonna look like this so let me just emulate what it looks like it's gonna look like this okay once you first boot up because it's still recognizing a 1920 by 1080 resolution or it's still it's still loading the setting that is 1920 by 1080 but you just go to uh it's gonna look weird but you just go to options general and then change this and then you can see on the bottom there is 3840 by 1080 which is our NVIDIA surround resolution. So you just keep changes, apply and save. So as you can see, you can fly around. It's nice that you can see left and right of your um, airplane. It's much nicer and it works quite well, you know, for, for what it is, it works quite well. Um, and uh, if you have a couple of uh, 1080p monitors lying around, I think it's perfect. I'm getting just under 30 FPS right now, 2830. Uh, that's probably because I'm also recording. I'm typically averaging maybe 45 FPS. Oh, I haven't retracted my uh, landing gear. That's a noob. That's a noob uh, move. Beautiful. Beautiful day. All right, so that's it for the tutorial on how to create a single ultra-wide monitor and play Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, as a with with like two monitors and ultra-wide it and super ultra-wide it. Um, I hope that helps you out, and uh, see you out there in the skies. See you next time. I'm Kohak here. Bye bye.